Say he got the name Sid Vicious after he chain whipped a journalist while performing in a London club. But the leader of the now disbanded group says he thought of Sid Vicious' name because Richie was anything but vicious. After cutting short an American tour last January, the group fell apart. Last October, Vicious, a heroin addict, was arrested and accused of fatally stabbing his girlfriend in the stomach. Friends speculated at the time it was part of a botched double suicide. Vicious' nude body was found today by his mother and a girlfriend in a Greenwich Village apartment one day after he was released from jail. He died of what's described as an accidental type drug overdose. At the height of his brief career, he was one of the kings of punk. In America, punk rock died sometime before him. Sid Vicious was 21. Steve Young, CBS News, New York. Friend was dead. The victim, Nancy Spungen of Philadelphia, was found in the singer suite at the Chelsea Hotel. He's been charged with second degree murders. Was the progenitor of punk. He and the Sex Pistols made international headlines for their antisocial antics that often triggered violence in the audience. They beat each other, they vomited on stage. And because of their criminal records off stage, Vicious once knocked a British Bobby's teeth out, the U.S. State Department for a while refused to give them visas for their American tour. It relented, and the tour lasted six months. The night the group split up, Vicious was pulled off a plane at Kennedy Airport, the victim of a drug overdose. Since then, he's lived at the Chelsea Hotel, performing infrequently. Yesterday, police found him there, in room 100, and on the bathroom floor, they found the 20-year-old American girl he'd lived with for two years. Sid Vicious reportedly admitted he'd stabbed Nancy Laura Spungen to death. And no one who knew him could believe it. But he really loved this person. I mean, you know, he'd been quoted in papers all around the world as stating it. He felt that Nancy was the most was the woman of the world. He felt that women should be like Nancy. And he loved her more than he loved his music. Sid Vicious, whose real name is John Simon Ritchie, was arraigned today on charges of murder. He said he felt sick. His manager was told bailing him out pending trial would be extremely difficult. He's an alien, he's not employed, and he's given to violent outbursts of temper. But his manager said, and I quote, Underneath that tough exterior, there was a real nice guy. Mary Alice Williams, New Center 4. ...who calls himself Sid Vicious is in a detention cell at the Manhattan Criminal Court building waiting for friends to post $50,000 bail. Vicious is charged with murdering his girlfriend yesterday, and today a Manhattan grand jury began hearing evidence in the case. More from Jeff Kamen. Jeff... Detectives say the 21-year-old bass guitarist seemed to have been under the influence of drugs when police arrived on the murder scene. On his way to court today and in the courtroom itself, he was subdued as compared to last night when he cursed and spat and kicked at photographers. A $50,000 bail was set by a Manhattan criminal court judge. The prosecutor objected strongly, saying no amount of money can assure his attendance in court. Sid Vicious and the woman police say he's confessed to killing both have a history of violence, according to music industry sources. The murder victim was remembered today as having recently told Vicious to slam against a rock club wall a woman who she didn't like, and then he did it. Vicious, who allegedly plunged his hunting knife into his lover's stomach in room 100 of the Chelsea Hotel where they lived together for the last month of their two-year relationship, was seen throwing tables at a woman in a Manhattan club recently. Vicious is reputed to have beaten a record company executive and kicked the woman who taunted him while he was on stage. Outside the hotel today, two punk rock fans showed up saying they are in mourning, but not for the 20-year-old girl Vicious allegedly killed. I'm in mourning for Sid today. Really? Really. I really feel sorry for him more than for the girl. Explain that, will you? Because, see, I think that he was such a product of his image, you know, and I think that probably he was, you know, like it was part of his image, and he got so involved in his image that he just would beat on her, maybe, and he got carried away. But I really don't think he could stab her. Why? Because he was so weak, his little hands could hardly hold the microphone. <laughs> it's true. It really is. If you ever saw him, you'd know his hands just dangled weakly. Yeah, but he wasn't too weak to spit at his fans or to stab himself with pins. But he can spit. Why did you like him and his music? What was there that you admired if he was so weak? I like weak men. 
This young man is lead guitarist of a New York punk rock group called The Rippers. Their act includes ripping off their shirts on stage, and the lead singer actually cuts himself with a scalpel as part of the routine. The musician locked out a newspaper account of the murder and then spoke about it. I saw walking right up the street yesterday. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was a publicity stunt, you know? It's uh, totally a mental case. I asked Chelsea Hotel manager Stanley Bard to describe Sid Vicious and his common-law wife and the way they behaved in the hotel. He was anything but vicious. In fact, I never knew him by that name. Uh, he was very quiet. He was a loner. They were sensitive people, and they seemed to get along very well. In fact, they were always holding one another in my office. So you sort of sensed that there was a great affection between them. On your left, Sid Vicious and the Sex Pistols band as they appeared in Atlanta last year. The British group crumbled under external and internal pressures while on tour in the U.S. and it fell apart. Sid Vicious, we're told, was depressed because of that and is thought to have increased his use of drugs. Now his girlfriend is dead and Vicious is the accused killer. Punk rock fans and musicians assured me today that the violence of their acts is pure showbiz and showbiz only. As for the landmark Chelsea Hotel where the murder took place, it is more used to names like Dylan Thomas and Bob Dylan than that of Sid Vicious, and its manager hopes the whole ugly story will soon blow away. Steve? Andy, the former member of the Sex Pistols, had been accused of beating up somebody some weeks ago. Vicious tried to commit suicide by cutting his wrists. One day after he was let out on bail, he died this morning. Bob T. traces the final hours in the life of this tormented young man. When police arrived at this five-story brownstone on Bank Street in the village, they found the body in a ground floor bedroom. Sid Vicious, the punk rock star, dead from an overdose of heroin. The dead man's mother had discovered the body at noon today when she went to awaken him in the bedroom of his girlfriend, Michelle Robinson. Miss Robinson, asleep at the time, was not aware that her boyfriend had died during the night. The story told to police by Miss Robinson and the dead man's mother goes like this. Sid Vicious, awaiting trial for the murder of a former girlfriend, had been released on bail yesterday from the prison on Rikers Island. He came here at 6 p.m. His mother and Miss Robinson had arranged a celebration in Miss Robinson's village apartment. About 10 friends came to the party. It continued until 2 a.m. Sid Vicious, they say, had been happy and jovial, talking at length about a comeback and the bright future in showbiz. Around midnight, he injected himself with heroin. A bad reaction followed. He regained and lost consciousness three or four times, they say, but eventually seemed to recover. He went to bed with his girlfriend at 3 a.m. and seemed to be all right. But Sid Vicious, police say, died from an overdose of heroin, and there was no indication of foul play. On Bank Street in the village, Bob Teague, New Center 4. Let's be here now the news. Sid Vicious will not have to stand trial for the murder of a girlfriend at the Chelsea Hotel. Sid is no longer vicious, he's dead. His nude body found in a Greenwich Village apartment, spoon and syringe nearby. The heroin overdose may have been accidental. Sid Vicious, a British punk rocker, became famous by being well known. Certainly not for his music. Perhaps for his public obscenities, anti-social statements and vulgarities. Bob Lape has more. Just one more in hundreds of overdose deaths in New York City every year. This one was the ultimate for a punk rocker whose life was a discordant jangle that gave savage substance to his stage name, Sid Vicious. John Simon Ritchie, dead of a heroin overdose at a girlfriend's home here on Bank Street. Detective Hausman, he arrived here at 6 p.m. last night. 6 p.m. The party followed. Right. The heroin was injected about midnight. Midnight. He had an overdose reaction at that right. point. Right. And then... Uh, he came out of it, and then he went back to them. A little while later, he went back to bed, and then he died in his sleep. The ex-sex pistol was described as happy about prospects for a bright future when he came here to 63 Bank last night and girlfriend Michelle Robinson and his mother and partied a bit after having been released from Rikers Island. John Simon Ritchie, a.k.a. Sid Vicious, had a 1 p.m. appointment with Homicide to talk about the murder charges against him in the killing of his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen. One hour earlier, he was found dead in bed. On Bank Street, Bob Lape reporting for Channel 7 Eyewitness News.
The death of Sid Vicious closes the murder case he was involved in. Vicious accused of stabbing his girlfriend, killing her in a Manhattan hotel last October. The district attorney's office tells us there will be no further investigation of that case. Last fall for the murder of companion Nancy Spungen. A subsequent suicide attempt while out on bail. And then an attack on the brother of singer Patti Smith that sent Vicious back to Rikers Island. He had just made bail again and was celebrating his release when he took what witnesses told police was an injection of heroin. About 12 o'clock, Sid Vicious shot up some heroin, and he had a reaction to it, which he came out of about 45 minutes later. And then about 2 o'clock, he lay down to go to sleep. Sid Vicious had undergone drug detoxification while in custody on Rikers Island. If he had used the same amount of drugs as he was used to, that program could have led to his death. The uh, significance of detoxification is that if a drug user is detoxified and uses the same dose he was used to, it can be lethal. So the detoxification program takes the drug user off the drug, but it also remo removes whatever tolerance or immunity he has to the drugs. Authorities say if that is what happened to Sid Vicious, they may be able to find out during an autopsy. All they know for now is that he had been asleep with companion Michelle Robinson at the time of his death. She's an unemployed actress who was hustled away from the scene along with the victim's mother as the crowd of curious and neighbors grew in size. Oh, my God. Oh my. Donna Florio lived just across the hall from the apartment in which the singer died. But she would not say whether she was among the eight people who attended last night's party for Sid Vicious. Did you know that uh, Vicious was staying here? Yeah, I did. Can you give us any insight as to how he had been acting recently? Um, I don't, I mean, I'm, uh, I don't believe this going on. But police say they were told by the victim's girlfriend that his last hours were spent looking toward the future. He was speaking about his future. The conversation with his girlfriend was about his future, and it appears from the conversation he didn't want to uh, do away with himself. What sort of future was he contemplating? I have no idea. He just uh, was talking about his future. Now, authorities told me they have no doubt their initial conclusion will hold up after an autopsy, that is, uh, an accidental overdose of heroin. But they say that considering who the victim is and the trouble he has been in, they're being extra cautious in investigating.